Hey y'all, welcome and welcome back to my channel. My name is Katrina and this is... I'm doing a wrap up for the last bit of my reading in October. And so let's just start right away with The Sentence is Death. It's the second in the Hawthorne and Horowitz books for with um, Anthony Horowitz. Uh, this book got a three out of me. I think the gimmick of the author writing himself into the book got stale really quick. Uh, I don't even remember the story that well. It's kind of a forgettable story. I'm sitting here looking at the description. I'm like, <laughs> he said, you shouldn't be here. It's too late. These heard over the phone were the last recorded words of successful celebrity divorce lawyer, Richard Price, found bludgeoned to death in his bachelor path with, pad with a bottle of wine, a 1982 Chateau Lafitte worth 3,000 pounds to be precise. Odd considering he didn't drink. Why this bottle and why those words and why this three digit number painted on the wall by the killer? And most importantly, which of, of the man's many, many enemies did the deed? The story is now starting to come back to me. <laughs> Baffled, the police are forced to bring in private investigator Daniel Hawthorne and his sidekick, the author Anthony, who's really getting rather good at this murder investigation business. But as Hawthorne takes on the case with the characteristic relish, it becomes clear that he too has secrets to hide. As our reluctant narrator becomes more embroiled in the case, he realizes that these secrets must be exposed, even at the risk of death. So yeah, I gave this three stars. Now the next book I read was Not a Happy Family by Sherry Lapina. This was a book that I got in a past Book of the Month Club, I think in August. And it was a mystery about this family who came together for Easter dinner and is three grown children, their spouses or, or significant others or partners. And the father was just a jerk. He was really mean and the mom was weak. The kids hated the father and they resented the mother for never standing up for them. And at this dinner, there's like all this stuff that's kind of dropped on them. Like the oldest daughter thought that the house would be hers, but the father said that he was gonna sell the house and he would like, he relished the fact that he knew that his daughter wanted the house and wasn't gonna get it. He, years before, had sold the business out from under his son who had expected to take that, you know, be able to, once his dad retired, take over that job. But now he's out of work and his father wouldn't lend him money and was humiliating him. And in fact, humiliating him that night. Um, and his youngest daughter, who was the kind of normal youngest daughter, the carefree kind of ne'er-do-well artist daughter who acted out and tried to do all kinds of things to shock her parents. She was going to be written out of, well, not written out of the will, but she was going to be, um, her, her allowance was going to be uh, cut down and, or I don't remember if it was gonna be taken away, but it was gonna be cut down at least at, at the minimum. And so they all had reasons to kill their family member. And as it goes on, you, you know, you find out more and more of them are lying about certain things and things don't look good. And you're left to wonder the whole time, who did this, who did this, you know? And this, I gave the story uh, 2.5 stars. I've said it was a compulsive and fast read. Lupina did a good job keeping me guessing about the identity of the killer. However, it was repetitive and the ending was uninspired. And the only reason why you, I couldn't figure out who did it, for me personally, I mean, I read other things where people said they knew exactly who did it. I don't know how, when all the characters snuck out of the house at one point, asked somebody to lie for them, ha all of them had motive, all of them had, uh, you know, somebody else who knew something about, like everybody had a motive just as equal as the others. And so I don't know how you could have figured out who did it, but it was just very repetitive. The, the gimmicks got really repetitive. So anyway, 2.5 stars for me for Not A Happy Family. Now, Good Night Beautiful by Amy Malloy. I gave this four stars. This was so fun. I couldn't put the book down. I read it in 24 hours. And I remember literally yelling in my bed after the fourth twist. 
<laughs> it was like twist after twist after twist. I remember yelling, what the actual F is going on? And I remember my husband came running back here like, what's going on? I'm like, it's the book, it's the book. Like what is going on, what is happening? So, um, newlyweds Sam Statler and Annie Porter are heads over heels and they are excited to say goodbye to New York and start a life together in Sam's sleepy hometown in upstate New York. Or it turns out a life where Annie spends most of her time alone while Sam, her therapist husband, works long hours in his downstairs office tending to the egos of his most mostly female clientele. Little does Sam know that through the vent in his ceiling, every word of his sessions can be heard from the room upstairs. The pharmacist's wife, whose boyfriend doesn't satisfy, the pharmacist's wife contemplating a divorce, the well-known painter whose boyfriend doesn't satisfy her in bed, who could resist living? Everything is fine until the French girl in the green Mini Cooper shows up and Sam decides to go to work and not come home, throwing a wrench into Sam and Annie's happily ever after. So, what I'm going to say <laughs> is that this book, that description is misleading. It And so, but that's still not even a spoiler. Cause like I said, you get a twist and then 25 pages later, you get another twist and then another twist. And it's like the, the twist twist on themselves. So it was really fun. The other people that I like, it seems the other people that I follow interesting they didn't like it as much but anyway <laughs> it was so good to me um and i will definitely be picking up more of her books and this is the kind of shenanigans that are in store for me honey you've got a big storm coming so yeah very twisty mystery um unreliable narrator so that's a little something to, to let you know what you're looking at when it comes to the twist but like I said there's multiple twists so even with that little bit of possible spoiler it is it is a surprise so that was a really fun book 12 nights at Rotter House by J.W. Auker was another book that I finished this was I gave it four stars um, this is a book where a travel writer who he's a travel writer with the the twist that he goes to supernatural places places where there are supernatural horrors or places that advertise themselves as like a haunted house or a haunted hotel haunted bed and breakfast or something like that and he goes and he stays hoping to see something supernatural and write about him but in actuality he doesn't believe in the supernatural so he's not going to really see anything so he convinces the owner of this one of the Rotterdam mansion to let him stay for 13 nights because he's not really doing well in his writer career and he's his wife is kind of giving him an ultimatum that if this last if this next book this last book isn't a hit then you need to find another job or we're, we're through I'm tired of struggling like this for your dream and uh so he thinks that this is the, the key. If he stays 13 nights, that's the key. Cause like one night is not enough. Like he thinks it, it'll really get people's attention if he stays 13 nights at this place and then is uh, writes, writes about what happens, you know? And so he stays at night, uh, he stays up during the uh, night and you know, records things and stuff like that. And then he uh, sleeps during the day. Probably the second day or so, a friend of his comes and stays with him. He and his friend had a falling out, and so it's really awkward um, at first with them. And they first kind of like tiptoe around it. And a couple days in, they uh, start to talk it out. And they have their first paranormal kind of thing happen. They talk about that paranormal thing a lot. They, they And then things start getting crazier after that. Um, and it just takes a, a, I don't know if it was maybe the last hundred pages, but it took like this really strange turn and it just got crazier and crazier and crazier. And it was so funny because I didn't figure out what was going on and I was telling my husband about it and he figured it, he figured it out just from me very poorly describing it to him. So I, again, I'm the easiest person to trick in these stories i'm not a riddle like stories just wash over me i'm not sitting there writing out um character maps and trying to figure out the story with them i'm just enjoying it as it goes and so this was an enjoyable ride and it had a surprise at the end it's probably looking back it's probably super super obvious <laughs> 
that what was going on in the story it just wasn't to me so if you are like me and you don't solve riddles easily if uh you don't try or if you just you don't have that brain thing firing at all cylinders then this will be a good book for you if you like mysteries and scary stories it is kind of gruesome and it's scary it goes crazy at the end and then there's obviously the twist that in hindsight probably is obvious but i i didn't get it <laughs> The next to last book that I finished was The Marriage by K.L. Slater. This is a story about a lady who is, so her, was he a teenager? He was like 19. So her son and his best friend got into a fight and the best friend was a, a boxer. So when he punched his friend, they just got into it. They were drunk. And they were fighting about something you find out what they were fighting about after that's part of the twist of the story but they're they're fighting about something is you know what you know part of what you're thinking about in the story is what would cause best friends who grew up together um to fight like this a fist fight but the boxer punches his friend one time the friend falls hits his head like on on the concrete and dies so he has to go to jail 10 years i believe for manslaughter and through a reconciliation program his uh, the mother of the murder victim gets in contact with him and through that they form a relationship they get and they get married while he's in jail and the mother of the jailed <clears throat> son he uh, she is just looking forward to him coming home like the, the but the father and he have a very strained relationship and so there's all these dynamics the whole the whole little neighborhood their friend groups and the overlapping kind of people in that group of people that they, that they all grew up with went to school together and things like that all obviously judge the woman and the the woman and the the well more like more the woman because you know obviously everybody's gonna judge the murderer but they judge her like how first of all he's he could be your son second of all you know so there's all this weird stuff and then as you get towards the end there are some twists but the story was twists are not the only thing that make a story good and towards the end of it i was just kind of i don't know i i gave it two stars i was not impressed by the story it took a long time to get to the point i, I didn't enjoy the ride um yeah but if you like stories that that are like domestic suspense and with a twist this is a good book for you it's definitely domestic you know because it's multiple families that you're looking at and you know you're you're very surprised at what this, you think like I thought I figured figured it out but I, I hadn't it was totally but it actually has a very high rating a 4.1 a 4.01 average on Goodreads is a very high rating so I am obviously in the minority. Then the last book I finished last night was A Deadly Inside Scoop by Abby Collette. This was an African American cozy mystery and it has all the cozy mystery things where it is, you know, cozy mysteries, the murder takes place off page, there's no cursing, there's no gratuitous sex, um, but I also, for me, a cozy mystery has to have a lot of atmosphere, and I want the town, the town to be really a, a big part of it. So for me personally, I like there to be, you know, either really snowy surroundings, and you get cozy coffee, you know, and it's all described, the food, and all that kind of stuff is described. So you know, they come in, they're all bundled up and then they sit down and they have their cup of cocoa then they talk about the murder and this book did not have any atmosphere in that sense it had a lot of really good characterization it's a, a family a very close-knit family very supportive family they do have a shop that has food and you do hear them talk about mixing up different um, flavors and things like that. I kept thinking of Cold Stone Creamery where you have the, the 
the buffet of toppings or and stuff that you can put into your ice cream and then they just kind of beat it all together in front of you and then put it in the cup seems like this is the, the same kind of thing they came up with like banana nut bread ice cream where you put bananas and nuts and all that kind of stuff and orange spice and all these like fantastical kinds of things so that was nice but I don't remember what the weather was like or anything like that or there wasn't um, there weren't very many towns member towns people who were neutral like the only towns people we got to know were people who were helping with the murder or who were um, suspects and I like when the whole town is kind of fleshed out and so yeah the atmosphere and besides the family the, the close-knit family which i loved i loved that there was multiple generations the, the main character she was a high-powered lawyer i think and then she came back home to you know once her grandmother died she came back home and restarted the ice cream shop and um their father their grand her grandfather was there her mother and father and then her um, and it's so that was nice to have friends that were still there but other than that we don't know anything else about like there are there quirky townspeople there crazy cat lady somewhere nothing like that and I just I didn't love it and so I wonder though if I'm starting to really just like paranormal ones because that adds a little bit of extra but also I do like the the extra stuff in the the, the atmosphere to be a lot more present because that's what makes the cozy and the cozy mystery for me. Cozy doesn't just mean it's clean. If it doesn't have a curse, if there's no gruesome murder, that's just a clean, what they call clean murders, uh, murder mysteries. Um, but I, th for me to make it cozy, we're talking about food, we're talking weather, we're talking, you know, the people are quirky like Gilmore Girls, like the whole town made Gilmore's, Gilmore Girls a great story, a great TV show. So that was the wrap up of the end of probably the um, last two weeks or so of reading, week and a half, two weeks of reading for me in October. How was your October reading? Did you do a lot of spooky reading or did you stick to a predetermined TBR that had nothing to do with autumn or Halloween or anything like that? Uh, let me know down below what you read, what you enjoyed. Let's put fall leaves as our emoji of the video. Be easy on yourself, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.